Good morning. Uh, firstly, three apologies. I need to time this because I'm not used to being kind on presentations and I'll ruffle on for ages, so put the time wrong. Secondly, uh, the presentation I'm going to go through. So I'm teaching anyone to suck eggs. I'm really sorry. I just like to go from the base level just to make sure I cover everything off. And I'm out of breath just when I've stepped the toilet. So <laughs> 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 and thirdly, I've been informed I've still got pink in my hair from my daughter's birthday party. So that's not like the, the norm. <laughs> but so I thought I'd mention it. So. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to do a quick overview of what we're going to go through so you can see the path we're going to talk about as opposed to thinking, oh God, when's this going to end? So um, I'm going to run through a summary. Um, then we're going to go specifically on to data restriction. Then there's a section on we disposal. Then a section on systems monitoring and auditing. And then a section on corporate social responsibility. And then, then the pain's finished. Okay, so start off. Brief overview of who we are to put things in context in terms of what I'm going to talk about. So, does this will work? Yeah. I'm the manager director of Grimwood Electronics. Uh, we're Europe's leading on site data destruction specialist. Uh, military background, lots of military customers, and over 25 years expertise within the industry. We were the first company to get 27,001 in 2013. 14,001 environmental, 9,001 quality, and 18,001 health and safety. This is really strange because I, I don't do presentations. I usually just talk to people, so you have to bear with me. After a little bit, I'll forget that and I'll just talk to you. So, so it's weird for me to be reading off the screen. Um, what do we do? Uh, we specialize in secure on-site data restriction technology standards. That is all we do. That's all we've ever done. Uh, we don't do off-site data destruction. Anyone that does off-site data destruction doesn't know about data destruction. Um, so we eliminate uh, the risks associated with data loss. We eliminate the risks associated with uh, we disposal, and we ensure, obviously, the name Greenwell, that everything is done ethically and responsibly. Some of our clients give you an idea. We work in the public sector. We work in the private sector, and we work. Uh, with the, the military as well. Okay, right. That's the bit that Greenwell done. The risks, what's changed in relation to the European data protection regulations, which is what the, the whole talk is about. The massive thing that's changed, you can go into all the detail with the, the European data protection regulations, but the ma massive thing that's changed is the quantum of the fines. So, that puts all the detail into complete insignificance. So at the moment, prior to the new regulations coming into place, you can get fined 500,000 by the ICO if you have a data breach. If you have anything to do with financial services, then it's completely unlimited fines. And in relation to the WE legislation, which we'll get on to, it's criminal prosecution and unlimited fines. The reason why all the detail of the regulations pale into insignificance in relation to the fines and we're seeing this massively with clients, is all of a sudden, 500,000 is not a big figure for a large company. But 100 million euros is, and they're actually talking about potentially 500 million euros. So all of a sudden, this area of risk that was considered minor, not really important, therefore I'm not really going to put any resource into it, is now getting elevated to a senior level within organisations, in some organisations to chief executive. Because if something goes wrong, it's going to be the chief exec or the chief CFO that's going to be on the line. So that's the massive, massive difference. And already organizations, we, we, we do everything to military standards, and we talk to organizations who say, this is how we do things, and we do it for a reason. Four or five years ago, they'd look at us and they'd go, I think you're a bit over there. Now they're actually ringing us up and saying, maybe you're not over there. Maybe can you provide the service for us? So they you, can't, you can go through all the detail, and there's, there's a fair number of changes, but the level of the fines is a massive, massive, massive change that is affecting everything in terms of information security. The second thing is it's going to be a complete level up. So you've got public sector and private sector. At the moment, 
public sector get a bit of a soft ride by the ICO, in my opinion. Private sector don't. If a private sector organisation has a problem, then they go to task with them. Public sector, because it's public sector, they go a little bit easy on them. That's our experience in terms of when there's a data issue. With the new regulations, it's going to be a complete level playing field. So you've got an NHS trust. They're going to be expected to have the same standards in place as BAE systems. There is not going to be a two-tiered system, which is what we have at the moment. Even though no one has it in writing, public sector is not expected to perform at the same standard as a private sector company. But that will completely change with the new regulations, which has a huge impact on any public sector organisations. European enforcement. Uh, Europe hates the UK with a passion. So at the moment, we've got Data Protection Act, ICO, FCA, and yes, they bring companies to task and they bring organisations to count task, but when the EU regulations go in place, you can guarantee the one place they're going to target to hang by the rafters is a UK-based business. So the fact that Europe are going to be pushing the regulations is, is a massive change also. So when it goes wrong, you can talk about the, you know, the fines, which are, which are huge, but there's also significant other factors which have to be taken into account. So loss of public and, and client confidence, that's, that's immeasurable. If you've got an organisation that's customer-focused, client-focused, and they lose confidence in you, then as a business, that has a massive impact, whether you're public sector or your private sector. Um, if you quoted, share price drop, a huge share price drop. You get a data issue, you're looking at 20, 30% drop in share price, which is, is massive. And if anything to do with the FCA, they've got already the power to impose unlimited fines and in certain cases, criminal prosecution. So I am going to talk about the wee legislation as well because there are areas within the wee legislation that are very, very important in relation to asset reconciliation. So they do form part of what, what I believe is pertinent for the audience. So the WE legislation is the Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment legislation. That is to ensure that when you dispose of equipment, it doesn't go into landfill. It's only EU-wide. However, there's criminal prosecution and limited fines for it. And someone has just gone to prison for 16 months, last month, for equipment not going down the path that it's supposed to go to. Um, corporate social responsibility is absolutely huge across private sector and public sector and if you get the WE legislation wrong then your name is going to be in headlights as the NHS was four or five years ago the dirty secrets of the NHS which I think was in the mail so if something goes wrong they're not interested in the company that's dealing with the data destruction and asset disposal they want to put the name up there in lights and shame them and that's, that's what, what the press do so the WE legislation changes are finally bringing prosecutions. It's taken the Environment Agency a long time, but they're finally coming to fruition. Um, recent disasters, I'm sure you're all aware of them. Nationwide a few years ago had a problem with a drive costing 980,000. They got class action for 14 million in total because as soon as you have been effectively prosecuted, there is no defence. So anyone that is affected by that prosecution can successfully sue you. Um, nationwide don't come under the FCA, they don't come under the ICO, therefore that's why it's over 500,000. NHS Surrey, 325,000, and Sussex Police, 200,000. So from my perspective, those are big numbers. But if the organisation doesn't think they're big numbers, well, you can magnify that by 20 or 34 when the new legislation hits. And also, the new legislation, Europe are already saying, you need to be putting it in place now. Forget about when the regulation is officially in place. You should be considering the, the steps you need to take to make sure that you're not falling foul of the legislation now. We legislation um, was revised in, revised in 2014. As I alluded to, prosecutions take a hell of a long time. The Environment Agency don't have a lot of resource. So it takes them a long time to pin down the organisations that are disposing of equipment incorrectly. Um, that was, until last week, that was the biggest fine, 112,000, and directors <coughs> facing 18 months imprisonment. Um, one of the key things about the WE legislation, which is really, really, really important, because there's criminal prosecution, you cannot warrant against criminal prosecution. So 
if you, when they prosecute, you, you start with, okay, someone's done something wrong, and they go back through the chain, and ultimately they go back to the last custodian of the assets, so that will be your organisation. So you're the last custodian of the assets, therefore, you should have shown correct due diligence in, in ensuring that equipment has been dealt with correctly, and if you don't, you're part of the chain. So they work backwards through the chain. Um, we legislation is actually put in place for a really good reason, because equipment gets dumped into landfill. Nasty toxins seep out of the, uh, out of the equipment into the landfill, causes a huge problem for the environment. So it's actually good legislation. Uh, I'll show you terrible light a little bit later, <coughs> but essentially what happens is equipment gets dumped either in Europe or outside of Europe, generally outside of Europe, into what were beautiful lagoons and now toxic dumps. So there's a massive impact on the environment, but it also kills children because children mine the metals within these toxic dumps. So there's a, there's a genuine, genuine reason why the legislation was put in place. You know, there's a genuine human side to why it's put in place. Terrible light. If you look up Terror Blight, it's a, a documentary that was done, it's about an hour long. To download it costs about seven pounds, and it actually goes towards uh, environmental help. So I'm not selling, selling Terror Blight, but you, if you want the free six minute YouTube clip, then you can go and get it. But essentially it shows you what happens with, with dumping. Um, and they did, they show you before and after pictures. This is a beautiful lagoon. This child that's in the middle here, uh, is walking around trying to mine metals by hand on soil that's got 50 times the permissible level of lead in it. So that's an issue. The second issue, wrecking the environment. The third issue is the way they mine metals is extremely basic. So they, they use fires, etc. We have items within computer equipment that explode. So again, if you watch the documentary, we'll talk about guys who don't even know what a computer is, but they know that it killed their mate last week when he was trying to mine the metals. So it's a serious issue, and the best way to understand the issue is to, to have, look up terrible. And the links in the packs that you've got. Okay, let me just check the timing. Okay, not, not too bad. Right, data destruction specifically. <coughs> I call it disaster waiting to happen. We deal with huge organisations. We've never been into an organisation that's not got holes in what they do, and I can say that absolutely categorically across all of our clients and all of our potential clients. It's a very specific area, and organisations do not put the relevant amount of resource into the area, and that's why there are holes. You will never go into an organisation where there is a specific asset disposal, data destruction, and we specialist. You don't get it. It doesn't matter how many employees they've got. It's not a role. It'll be a role that will be created, but at the moment, there is not that role within organisations, or I've certainly have never seen it. Because of that, because of the lack of resources put in, consequently, that's why organisations have holes. As soon as you have a hole, you have a problem. Okay, so some of the issues. New IT equipment is sexy, redundant equipment is forgotten. IT people like sexy equipment. As soon as it's switched off, they're not interested. It's quite a blunt statement, but it's the truth. So consequently, there are lots of structures and implementations put into IT equipment to make sure data is secure while it's live. When it's switched off, gets thrown in the corner, can't ping it on the network, they're not interested in it. Huge risk occurs. When you come to dispose of equipment, Organisations don't look properly into who's going to deal with the disposal. You get lots of generalists and not specialists. You get a generalist, they do a myriad of things, and by the way, we tag on a bit of data structure, including the large companies, even the likes of HP and Dell. They don't actually do data destruction. They bring a third party in to do the data destruction, and the equipment goes off site. So if you're dealing with disposal, make sure you check out the company properly and make sure it's a specialist, not a generalist. Off-site data destruction. There are loads of companies that do off-site data destruction. It's a huge and insurable risk. As soon as the asset leaves your premises, you're at risk. It's as simple as that. So, 
if you think about it, potentially 100 million euros worth of fines, and that relates to every asset. So if you've got 200 PCs on a, on a uh, vehicle and take it off site, how much is that risk? How do you insure that risk? If you go to an insurer and say, well, potentially each one of these machines could cost 75 million sterling, and I've got 200 on the back of the vehicle, can you give me an insurance quote, please? They'll give you one, but you'll soon turn the vehicle around and take the assets back to, to within your organization. Um, lots of off-site companies, and there's lots, since the wheel legislation came in place six, seven years ago, there's lots of companies that are that deal with metal and they think, okay, there's a way to earn money because IT equipment is metals and all the rest of it. You've got to realize when you're disposing of IT equipment, data destruction is a specialist area. You don't go to a scrap metal company to deal with your data destruction. And lots of companies effectively were that and now see this as a revenue stream. Okay, so if you look at, I can give you loads of examples, but your data, your, your custodians of the data on equipment, who do you know is actually dealing with the data destruction? So if they've not got the right level of integrity, what's the point? They've got access to all the data. <coughs> so the integrity of the people that do the work is absolutely paramount. Absolutely paramount. If they've not been vetted properly and don't have the right level of integrity, all your processes are a waste of time. Asset registers are rarely, I say rarely, I would say never 100% accurate. So, the way, if you're investigated for an issue, they're not particularly clever, they're very straightforward. They take your asset register, they say this asset has been disposed of, show me your data destruction certificate. And if you can't, technically you've got data loss. Very, very straightforward. And uh, asset reconciliation to prove what you've disposed of, you have the, the, the relevant data destruction certification is hugely important. You can't just say we've destroyed the data unless you can prove it, technically you've got data loss. Then you get on to actual data destruction. There's loads of unapproved methods of data destruction. People drill holes in hard drives and get all the, get all the data back. People um, use unapproved methods uh, of overriding software, you can get all the data back because you peel the data off. Uh, people use factory resets on these things. Most of the mobile phone operators do factory resets. You can recover all the data, or certainly about a year's worth of data. You've got to make sure when you destroy the data, it's done to an approved method. And there's a standard, it's called I5A, which Every government agency and every military operator has to abide by it. They don't necessarily, but they're supposed to abide by it. So there is a Bible. Just abide by the Bible. If you abide by the Bible, you won't have a problem. Technology and equipment continually changes. So I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the police force, I can't name the, the, the organization, one of the police forces that we deal with, we're demonstrating some new equipment that we've got uh, in relation to, it's actually in relation to solid state. And they had a degausser, which was a CSG approved degausser sat there. And we asked the question, why have you got that degausser? Because we do all your work anyway. They said, well, we were audited by, by the ICO. And they said, you've not got a CSG approved degausser. So we went and bought one. So I said, okay, right. So show me how you use it. So the chap showed me how he used the degausser. And I said to him, you've not degausser that drive. It's still got data on it. He said, how do you know? I said, because you're not burning your hand because you have to hold the drive onto the plate for a certain amount of time and it gets so hot it burns your hand. So I showed him, I'm actually burnt my hand, a bit stupid, I'm blonde. So, <laughs> um, so, but more importantly, that degausser was approved 10 years ago for specific media. So 40 gig hard drive is fine, an 80 gig hard drive is fine, 160 just about, but if you go above that size hard drive, it will not destroy the data. Media changes. So your processes and the equipment you use has to change with it. You can't just go, well, it was approved. It's still approved on the approved list, but it's approved for this media, not for every piece of media. So the type of equipment that you use is extremely, 
important. Your processes are extremely important. I've got a feeling I've gone over there now. No, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So what are some of the things you need to do? Essential things. He's a specialist. Never, ever accept anything except on-site data distribution. It doesn't matter what waffle they come out with. Nothing is secure unless it's done in front of you. Um, covers, covers first two points. Make sure the people that are doing the work have got the right level of integrity. They can have military uh, clearance, they can have police with SC. A CRB check is not a security check. It's a security check for different reasons. So you, you've got to make sure they've got the right level of security. And the person that's doing it has got the right level of security, not the person that's sat in the office that happens to have some sort of badge, the person that's doing the work. There's a massive, massive market for data. If I was corrupt, I'd be a billionaire. Absolutely, because there's a market for data. If you go, I'm not singling out Nigeria at all, it's just an example, but there are lots of markets where they sell assets with data on, or they just sell the data. It's a huge, huge market in it. So if the person that's doing the work is aware of this, they can make a hell of a lot more money taking the asset, not doing the job, and actually selling the data. Um, On-site asset reconciliation, this is a huge one. I said before, rarely or never have organisations got um, accurate, uh, was it, accurate uh, databases or asset registers. Something really, really simple. So you have a machine sat in the corner and your organisation believes it's got a hard drive in it. But it hasn't. So if that piece of equipment gets taken away and you get a report in a week's time that says, oh, we've dealt with asset one, two, three, four. Well, there was no hard drive in it. And you say, yes, there was. And they say, no, there wasn't. You've got data loss. Technically, that's data loss. The, the amount of instances where the asset register is not correct and not up to date and not showing the true position are absolutely huge. So unless you identify that what the true position is before you start your disposal work, you're on a hiding to nothing. Absolute hiding to nothing. Um, you've got to complete your data restriction to military standards. CSG and the NSA set specific standards of data destruction for all the different asset types. So there's no excuse. The only excuse is, well, I didn't have a copy of I5A or I didn't have a copy of the NSA standards, but you can get them if you ask for them, because they're not publicly available, you can get them. And it clearly, it's not the best bedtime reading, 100 pages, it'll send you to sleep, but it clearly defines what's your risk, what's the asset type, this is how you should deal with it. Um, so if you ever get an issue when you followed I5A, it's going to be very difficult for someone to come back to you and say, well, you've not done what you should have done. We followed the processes we were supposed to do as per I5A or as per the NSA. Okay, there's been an issue, but we've done everything we could have done to make sure that we've got a chain of custody and we have asset reconciliation and we have destroyed the data the way it's supposed to have been done. Um, continually, I've alluded to it, continually updating uh, the equipment, software, methodologies to make sure emerging and advancing technologies are catered for. Things are changing very, very quickly. You have to have the right technologies. And you've got to get it insured. You've got to have a stamp that says, right, we've done this and this is our insurance if something goes wrong. Loads of organisations say, oh, we want to save a bit of money and we'll go and buy the gals and we'll do it in-house. That's completely the wrong approach because, number one, you don't keep up to date with um, technology, so you won't be doing the right thing. Secondly, if something goes wrong, it's completely on you guys. You want someone that's going to take the risk away from you and go, look, I've signed it off. We're liable. We'll, you know, we'll deal with it. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not this, is, this is general advice. This is not going to green world. So you have a zero tolerance to data loss. Having one asset where you cannot track it, show the data has been destroyed and destroyed to the right standard is completely unacceptable. Because one asset could cost you an absolute fortune. Okay, data destruction asset types. This is a huge thing. People know there are data on machines, on PCs. They, they know there are, or there shouldn't be, but there always is. They say, well, you speak to someone in IT and say, 
we're not allowed to save information locally, therefore there's no data on it. Then if you ask the same question, all right, I'll bet you £100 that there is data on one of these, it'll be fine, they will not take up the bet because we know people do save information locally. So you've got to assume anything potentially that could carry data is carrying data. And if you work on that basis, you won't have a problem. But people forget about things like floppy disks. The data on them. They forget about mobile phones. This has got 64 gig. That is equivalent to a PC of about 10 years ago. Oh, I've done a factory reset. We cover all the data. Oh, I've, I've shredded it. The chip on it is... Yep, that works. The chip that stores the data is that big. So you shred it into nice 12 millimeter pieces. <coughs> if you can find that chip, you take it off, you put it on another board, you recover all the data. And that's what the police do in forensic departments. Um, so if you ever get into, oop, wrong way, sorry. If you ever get into trouble with the police, first thing they do is take your mobile phone off you and try and do data recovery. Um, USB sticks, optical media, <laughs> all of these assets, this is huge, even, even certain prints of certain fax machines, they have drives and they have data, they store data, so it pretends you can store data, assume it's got data on it and deal with it accordingly. Okay, right, that's data. And no one's fallen asleep yet, so that's good, and I'm, I'm reasonably on time, so. Uh, okay, we disposal. I discussed whether this was applicable or not, and it is applicable because of asset reconciliation and custodian, custody of assets. So, the primary problem, which I'll come on to, with we disposal, it's the, it's the world's <coughs> largest grain waste stream, and it's very, very harmful chemicals, as I alluded to earlier. The cheap way to get rid of equipment, and everyone's always looking for a cheap way to do it, because we want to make more money, because all organisations want to make money or want to save money, it's just to dump it. There's no regulations over there, I'm just going to dump it. And that's what America does, incidentally, because they have no regulations, so they do whatever they want. If you look at terrible, it's focused on America, but it still happens in Europe. They ship outside of Europe. So, there's the legislation, criminal prosecution, unlimited fines, but there's a genuine human element to it. Do you really want to be associated with your equipment ruining the environment and potentially killing children? Because I, I don't. And there's no need for it to happen because she's a company that does things properly. I mentioned about prosecution through the chain. Companies that dump your equipment are not bothered that the fact that they didn't take off Edinburgh Napier 120319. It's not difficult to trace the asset, or you can go into if they know, if they know what they're doing, you go in and there's some markings, they'll get serial number, so it's a Dell asset can trace it back to Dell and find out who the last user was, because that's what the Environment Agency are interested in. Who was the custodian of this asset before it was retired? That's what they're interested in. They work down the chain. So finding out whose it was is very, very easy. The people that dump equipment, they're not interested in doing things properly. They're not interested in the fact that you're going to be exposed. So, as organisations, with we, Key thing you've got to do is you've got to show proper due diligence. You can't just go, I've got that company and they're giving me a couple of certificates and everything's fine. You need to make sure that every asset you dispose of, you've got complete traceability through the chain. And that's your responsibility. Not the recycling company, that's your responsibility. You need to make sure you've done your asset reconciliation before the assets are disposed of. Otherwise, if you don't know what you've got, how can you prove it's been dealt with? You've got to make sure that the person that says they're doing what they're doing is actually doing what they're doing. And if you don't, they come through the chain. You cannot warrant against criminal prosecution. We can't warrant against criminal prosecution. We can warrant against fines. We can say you want to get fined. We can't warrant against criminal prosecution. I have to throw in a joke, it's a bit heavy this, isn't it? <laughs> Especially after the previous chap. Okay, so what do you need to do? Well, first of all, ISO 14001 is uh, the environmental ISO. So any decent company has got to have 14001. Got to have 9001 because it's quality and procedures. So there are a couple of good things to, to look for with any decent, any decent company. 
and a business that's got close links with the Environment Agency. There are lots of businesses that regularly speak to the Environment Agency. There is actually a Crime Stoppers leaflet that the Environment, Environment Agency give out saying, please report people that are dumping equipment, because that's how serious it is. Got to have your on-site asset reconciliation. Absolutely paramount with everything. Make sure everything's traced through <coughs> asset sign over right through ultimate, up to ultimate disposal and make sure your assets are debranded. Whatever's going to happen to that equipment, whether you've got it etched, whether you've got a little sticker on it like this, whatever security markings you've got on it with your equipment, you want them removed. If your equipment, what happens to it there afterwards, <coughs> straight recycled or not recycled, you want those markings removed. And if you are going to remarket the asset, which I'll come on to, you've got to make sure that equipment is remarketed in a very ethical way and it's completely transparent. So you know that equipment is being reused and is not getting dumped. Okay. Ooh. Have zero tolerance to asset loss. It's the same as data. If the asset goes missing, whether it's got data on it or not, you've got an issue. Make sure all equipment is disposed of if it's recycled in this country. None of this, oh, well, I'm exporting it there, I'm exporting it there, done in this country, because then you can audit it. Just get in your car, and get on the train, just say, I want to audit your processes. I want to see one of my pieces of equipment going through the process. And number two, Certain types of equipment can't be exported anyway. It's actually breach of the hazardous waste regulations. So it must be recycled in this country. And there's no reason not to recycle in this country apart from someone wants to cut corners at your risk. Asset types is you've got all your data assets and then you've got all the other stuff as well. It's not just people think of we as I've got printer when you're dealing with, but there's, there's loads of other equipment. Uh, networking equipment after you've done um, certain data destruction on it, power cables, keyboards, mice, server racks, monitors, CRT. CRTs are the worst thing, and there's not a lot of them around. They've got really nasty stuff in them, lots of lead. And so do TFT, these screens have got horrible chemicals in them. So whether it's on a laptop with data on it, or potentially data, or whether it's just a TFT, anything that's electronic is covered by the WE legislation. Okay, doing all right. Systems, monitoring and auditing. Okay. So, this is all about proving that you've done the right thing. There's no point just saying we've done the right thing or we've contracted the right company to do the right thing. You've got to prove you've done the right thing. Cannot prove total disposal compliance if your asset register is not 100% accurate. Absolutely, completely concrete. So, say you've got an asset register with a thousand assets. If you haven't got a thousand, you've got 999, or you've got a thousand and one, then you've got a problem. If you've got a thousand assets, and that all ties in, but actually 30 of them don't have hard drives in, and you, on your system you think you've got hard drives in, you've got a problem. So, the asset register, and knowing what you've got, and that being an accurate reflection, of the assets and the status of your assets is absolutely paramount. And if you don't get that right, the rest of it's a waste of time. Okay. So you get two scenarios. You get a scenario where um, you go to a client's site, do all the asset reconciliation, perform the asset reconciliation, provide all the information to the client, do all the data destruction deal with all the equipment, okay? That's good, but the client should have already checked all those assets to make sure they were acceptable and tied into their asset register, and the clients don't. So whilst everything has been done correctly, they've not done the tracing bit. And genuinely, gen generally, when they trace it back to their system is when they have an I ICO order or when they have a problem. And then they try and go back four years and go, right, we've got all this information, we've got all these data structure certificates, We've got all this asset uh, reconciliation, that's great, but now it doesn't quite tie into our asset register. It's too late doing it when, you get, when, you, when you're audited. You should do it prior to giving the equipment to the disposal company so you know those assets are fine. We know where they are on the asset register. We know the status of them. 
we can tie in all the data description and we certification back into those assets. No point doing it three or four years later when you get the ICO knocking on your door or the FCA knocking on your door or whoever the, the new enforcer is going to be with the, with the new regulations. Set the path up, maybe. Maybe you'll have a new role. Fraud, <laughs> fraud investigation and data distribution, possibly. We <laughs> um, certainly know all the nuts and crannies, won't we? Um, so, uh, <coughs> the key thing is, if you've not done the asset reconciliation prior to the work being done, do it at the time the work's done. So, okay, that's what's physically there. Everyone agrees that's what's there. Right, let's tie it back into our asset register. Now we're happy, now the assets can leave site. Make sure every asset disposed of has got a military data destruction certificate. That's bad English, but it's the truth. Asset number 120, I'm not going to wipe it, don't worry, 120319, Edinburgh Napier, which is a Toshiba laptop, Core i5, hard drive in it, probably 160 gig hard drive, serial number XYZ, data destruction certificate. It's very simple. The way the audit you is very simple. Make sure you've got complete transparency. That asset has been signed over, 120319. I have the data restriction certificate and I have the onward disposal traceability of that piece of equipment. I know what's happened to it. We're on the, we're on the four sections. We'll be doing all right. Just hang, just hang in there. Nearly at the end of the fourth section as well. Right, so the essentials of monitoring and auditing, you've got to have a complete asset disposal system, excuse me. Most of, well all of, the systems that are out there, the remedies, all the CRM systems, they're not really geared towards what happens when you dispose of the equipment because it's not seen as core by, by IT. So they have some functionality, but usually not enough functionality. Do your on-site asset signover and recon reconciliation, paramount. Make sure that all the current and pending data regulations you're completely aware of. I know it sounds like, uh, you know, a given, but, okay, the legislation is probably not going to be in place until 2018, but they're saying you should be doing it now. They're also saying maybe not 100 million, maybe 500 million. So things are constantly changing with this legislation before it comes into place. Once it's in place, it probably won't get changed again for a few years, but over the next two years, there will be constant updates on the legislation which will impact on what you're doing. Keep abreast of, uh, of the recent data disasters. The best way to learn is to see where someone's cocked it up. If they've done it wrong, have a, have a look at how they've done it wrong. So a police force, and this is in the public domain, so I can talk about it. Police force. They move locations from one to another. And all the backup tapes of their servers, they leave in the basement for a couple of days. Data breach, fine. Really simple, but they left it unattended. Really, really simple. So, so quite often, data issues happen over really, really simple things because there isn't someone in the organization that goes, you know what, I'm going to make sure this is right. I'm going to make sure this is nailed down. Whatever circumstances, this is my bag. This is what I'm dealing with. And that's the huge problem. The nationwide issue was one laptop. 14 million for one laptop. It's a lot of money. <coughs> Environmental. Um, again, keep abreast of the, the current pending environmental regulations. We were revised in 2014, beginning of 2014. They'll continue to be revised, probably a lot faster than the data protection regulations. Uh, keep abreast of environmental disasters to say that criminal prosecution is coming through now. We've had two. It doesn't seem a lot, but it takes them five, six years to prosecute. So, Because it's criminal, it takes a lot longer. Um, th there are lots of benefits how to dispose of equipment properly. You can actually get a massive CO2 benefit if you reuse a piece of equipment rather than recycling it. There's a massive CO2 benefit because a new piece of equipment is not being manufactured. So, so it's not just about taking away the risk. There's good things that you can do with equipment, which are beneficial to your organisation, beneficial you know, globally. Um, okay, asset reconciliation. Your assets are there. You don't know what you've got. 
sounds quite a blunt statement, but if you can't nail it, you don't know what you've got, you need to be able to tie that back into your asset register. So you need a methodology to actually do it. So you need, this sounds like I'm <coughs> talking about Greenwell now, but you need something like a piece of software that will integrate with your asset management system to perform that asset reconciliation to make your life a hell of a lot easier. So quarantine assets that don't tie in. You've got an asset in the corner. It's 12031. It's getting a bit of a hammer this laptop, isn't it? 120319 is there for disposal in the corner. Okay, but it doesn't tie into your asset register. So quarantine it. Don't dispose of it until you know what the history is with it, until you know what the situation is with this asset, and then dispose of it. Okay. Corporate social responsibility. Got 3.4, minutes 45 seconds to do this. Let's try. Right. If you're not sure where your assets have gone to, how can you prove they're not destroying the lives, or destroying lives and the environment? Honestly, what's terrible? Like? It's shocking, but it's the truth. It's an independent documentary, and then you'll realise. Some of the images, I say, we've not got time to, to run to run the video, and it's, it's relatively recent, it's about 18 months old. Okay, corporate social responsibility is absolutely a huge area with most organisations. They want to be seen to be doing the right thing. Some organisations want to be seen to be doing the right thing because we, we're blowing people up, therefore we want to do some good in the world, and other organisations want to do the right thing because they genuinely want to do the right thing. It's been quite cynical, but it's the truth. <coughs> Regardless, corporate social responsibility is a very big area. So, if you can, when, once you've taken away the risk, taken away the risk, there is no risk to your organisation. If you can reuse the asset, that's far more beneficial to the environment. And someone is getting a low-cost, quality piece of equipment, so long as you follow specific rules to make sure it's being reused. So you can significantly reduce your own carbon footprint because there's tons of CO2 that can be saved as opposed to new equipment being manufactured. You can get a good revenue stream from second user IT equipment. So it doesn't have to be, okay, well, disposing of equipment properly is really expensive. It isn't really expensive at all. So you can get a good revenue stream for your organisation from remarketing equipment if it's done the right way once the risk has been eradicated. Um, one of the key things with remarketing is that you've got to have transparency and traceability. You need to see the equipment is going to an organisation that is reusing the equipment, not a broker. It was um, the dirty secrets of the NHS was was a, was a good one, which I mentioned earlier. There was three and three quarter pages on the NHS trust that was killing children in Africa, and there was about two lines on the recycler, and they said. We sold the equipment to a broker. We didn't know what would happen with it. So, being able to see what happens to the equipment, very, very important, and making sure it's going to an end user, extremely important. And there's, there's, there's very simple commercial ways you can deal with that. If the value of the metal is higher than the price you sell the equipment for, you don't sell it. It's very, very simple. So anyone that says, I didn't know, is talking complete rubbish. So if a machine can be sold for £25 and the value of the metal within it is £4, you can guarantee that piece of equipment is being reused. If you sell a piece of equipment for £2 and the value of the metal is £4, there's a very good chance that equipment is going to get stripped down illegally and dumped. So there's very simple commercial ways that you can definitively know that equipment is being dealt with the right way and being reused for someone that needs to reuse it. So, um, if you can't remarket an asset, then you recycle. <coughs> so, remarketing is the preferable method, environmentally and also commercially for the client. If you can't, you must recycle strict environmental standards in this country. Absolutely 150 million percent in this country. Uh, you can achieve 0% landfill. Uh, or very, very close to 0% landfill, you can get to about 99.3% with recycled equipment. So the equipment gets broken down into its constituent metals, plastics and glasses, and it's put back into manufacturing. Um, 
and make sure, as a minimum, you're adhering to the wheel legislation, but ideally, try and go above the wheel legislation. Okay, last bit, are we there? Now, this is a real bugbear of mine. The cost of disposal is irrelevant, the risk is not totally eradicated. The amount of times you have organisations that quibble over 10p when you've got millions and millions and millions of pounds with the risk involved. It's absolutely ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. The risk is huge. If you happen to get 10p more from that organisation but they've not dealt with your risk, what's the point? So deal with the risk, make sure that's all signed off, make sure there are no issues for your organisation, and then make sure that it's a commercially sound proposition. Don't look at commercially sound proposition and then look at the risk, which is what most organisations do, which is completely the wrong way to deal with it. But when there's a problem and they've dealt with the wrong company, trust me, that's the last thing on their mind. There's been conversations over the last 12 months with organisations that have had issues, and the opening line by the head of IT is, I really don't care what this costs, I just need it dealing with. Having said that, this is why that is a bugbear of mine. Huge risks. But if your IT equipment is five years old or less, it won't cost you anything, or very close to not costing you anything, because the residual value in the equipment offsets all of the data restriction charges, offsets all of the we recycling charges. So there's no excuse, absolutely no excuse. I haven't got the budget to deal with this properly. Well, have you got the budget to pay 100 million euro fine? Is that in your budget anyway? Five years old or less, it'll be cost neutral. If you've got three or four year old equipment, which does happen with a lot of private sector organisations and within the public sector, because within the public sector there's been a lot of upgrading going on over the last probably five years because of operating systems, then you should actually be in the net revenue. So doing things properly doesn't have to cost you money. So any, any, any body that sits there and says we want to use them because they turn around and said I'm going to give you £50 a box on that particular one. So over the course of the year we're, we're going to be £5,000 better off is talking absolute nonsense. Do the right thing, then look at the commercials. And if you're dealing with a proper company, the commercials will be very favourable anyway. Oh, I only went a little bit. <laughs> and that's it. Are there any, any questions? It's a load of nonsense. Shredding is not a proved method of data destruction. Simple. So if you look at any credible documentation, it's not a proved method of data destruction. Um, it's mentioned within I5A after you've destroyed the data. So if you've got like a secret asset, so classification 5 or 6, so you're dealing with a set of military and you've got a secret asset, high level of classification, you destroy the data, declassify the asset, and then you shred it, which is belt and braces. Shredding is a method of asset destruction, it's not a method of data destruction. Absolute period. So anyone that comes along and says, all right, I'm shredding your drives, is talking through the backside. Absolutely. Second thing, and the huge thing that people miss, to shred a drive is insecure because it has to go out of a secure environment. So someone turns up in a big truck, but it's come out of your secure area, and you get someone just throwing drives into a hopper. First they get caught in the hopper, they don't go through but you can't see, because obviously you don't want to be putting your head in. So you don't know they've gone through. You can't prove what went in came out. Secondly, they don't shred to the right size. But the, the standard is two millimetre. Two millimetre is minute. After the data restriction has been done, it's absolutely minute. So you get a big crush, you lose it to like 30 millimetre. We can recover 300 pages of data from one inch of hard drive. But the huge other issue is you will lose your asset reconciliation because nobody stores the serial number of the hard drive on their asset register. This, so this machine, 120319, I will absolutely put my life on it, um, yeah, put my life on it, that the serial number of this hard drive in here is not recorded on the asset register. So if you set the drive out, and then take it off to your shredding machine, 
They note down the serial number of the hard drive, you put it in the hopper. If it's been shredded, great, but you don't know and they can't prove it. If it's been shredded to 2 millimeter, great, but it won't have been done because that's a military standard and these shredders do it to 30 millimeter. But they'll give you a certificate that says asset number 1235789, hard drive, we shredded it. Okay, but what does that relate to anything on your asset register? Because you're recording this asset number, 120319. Not the hard drive serial number. So that data destruction certificate, in inverted commas, because it isn't, means absolutely nothing. Because you can't prove anything. Which, which machine did it come out of? Because they're, they're the asset tags that you, cut, you, you store on your asset register. So anyone that comes along and says, don't worry, don't, I said, sound very normal now, don't worry, love, we shred your drives. Because usually the recyclers that do it, it's a load of nonsense, not approved, lose complete traceability, it's a waste of time. We actually had this conversation with one of our police clients who now is a bigger area. So one area is shredding and the other area is doing things properly. And so we've had to spell it out to them and refer them to the NSA document, at which point the head of IT has said, where do we sign? And that's a police force. Thank you for that question, sir. <laughs> Any other quick questions? Do you have a real sense that things are going to change in the light of the new EU regulations and the massive things that we think is? I mean, I see the exact, because my sense is that you guys must come up with the same sort of problems with alcoholics getting up, but you know, absolutely got that. I mean, we've never tried to cut a corner here. You know, we did this in the house ourselves. Do you get a sense that things have changed? Hugely, absolutely hugely. As I say, we've had organisations over the last 12 months that have approached us. We've spoken to them several years ago, but they thought, you're a bit, a bit scaremongering. But then they come back and they go, actually, we don't, we don't think you are now. Can you provide this service to us? So, Classic example, there was a, uh, an NHS foundation trust that was in special measures. The IT director was assigned to the special measures trust. The first thing he did was ring us up and said, right, I've got enough problems. I don't want an issue in this area. Can you come and sort it out, please? Because he was aware of, of, of what the issue is. So it is massively changing. But the, the whole, which is, is great if you get the right people in the meeting. So if you have a situation and you're talking to an IT manager, because it isn't his backside that's on the line, yeah sort of goes over his head. If you get the head of IT into a conversation and you mention or point out the holes in what they're doing and then go, by the way, they're the fines, you can't sign up quickly enough. So it's a matter of it being the issue. Because what, what happens is IT directors, uh, so an IG person is reporting into an IT director or they may be reporting into the, the finance director, but anyway, the IT director speaks to his IT, oh yeah, we've got it all, the IT manager, we've got it all covered, it's all fine, don't worry about it. When you actually put specific questions to the IT manager and you get cross, 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 and then put it in front of the IT director, and then by cross, cross, cross means 100 million euros, then all of a sudden he's interested. So that's what I mean that when I opened up and said, act to me, 500,000 is a lot of money. But to some large organizations, it's small beer in, in terms of everything that they're getting on with. 100 million euros is not. So the magnitude, the biggest change with the regulations and the biggest impact on everyone is the magnitude of the fine, which means all of a sudden there is a huge amount of, we've got to look at this, I've got to make sure it's sorted. Because ultimately, the IT director didn't want to get fined, because he will do, because it's a problem. The chief executive, because he won the organisation, the chief executive didn't want to get fired, because he will do, because the magnitude of the situation. So there's a, there's a huge change. And we've seen it, to be honest, more in the public sector than the private sector, which is surprising. And it will continue, it will continue because, but then you get an easier reaction. Oh, come on, let's shred everything, which is not the right thing to do. <laughs> but that's, that's, if everyone gets a problem, they go, oh, let's get a truck in and shred it all. But that's not the right thing to do. Just quickly, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, thanks for your time. Right for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free to ask any questions. I won't okay. shuffle on for the ones I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Um,